There is no bubble. This would be my counter arguments. There is no bubble. Yeah, There's agree. always people investing in your business. It's nothing's about nothing's about to pop. We're not playing musical chairs where there's no seat left for you and you just got screwed, dentists, warning. I would argue that that valuations are predicated on interest rates. Most private equity buys you with leverage. And so it's not drying up, it's not popping. It just might not be the best time to sell. It's not the height of the market now. But for everyone listening, thinking that like, oh shit, I should act, don't listen to this shit. Build your business. Focus on EBITDA, focus on cash flow, focus on all those things to become bulletproof so you don't pray victim to shit like this that's gonna scare you. It's time, it's showtime. Hey, by the way, guys, we have to start off real quick with a with a small retraction of um, what was said uh, about oh, Aspen. Do. Yeah, we do. Because, uh, you know, listen, there's actually people who listen to this. I got several calls um, when we were looking at that company. I don't even know what the hell company that was, but that's not Aspen Dental that we were speaking about the last podcast together. Um, Aspen Dental is right. not a publicly traded company. There's no. Yeah, that was my bad traded. on that one. Yeah, but dude, you got to you gotta know your stuff. You, you, you're you so oh, smart. Oh, yeah. Well, when, we, when we spiral so, so, much I lit- so many topics, and well, don't it's, called spiral, it's not called spiral. It's called conversation. It's conversation is not scripted. It's a fireside no. chat without a fire. Yeah, yeah. it's a fireside chat. But with you're a so very you, structured you know list so of much. things that Pete's want, Pete wants us to go through. Listen, stop, stop like... inserting your microaggression when you go into <laughs> when Quite. you go into <laughs> such an area. This is for losers. Yeah, but also you, the most important thing is <laughs> screw this. I'm standing up for this. No, the, the most important thing is you, you speak with such authoritative confidence that you led me down this thing. I'm like, uh, you know, you got to be careful. And Well, you're also easy to lead down a rope. <laughs> Jeez, dagger, daggers. Oh, well, okay. truth. I mean, this truth, is, we all are in this group. Yeah, that was on me. I, and watch this shit happen. This is fantastic. Yeah, I was, what I enjoyed was it was like going the right direction. I was like, all right, well, let's get more data because... Aspen was all over the waves where they were talking about everything going on and how they got hacked and all these other issues. And I had already like in that conversation, I started text messaging friends of mine that I know that are involved in Aspen and, and I wouldn't get in feedback yet because well, they were still kind of in the dark trying to figure things out. And, um, and so I started looking it up right during the podcast. Next thing you know, like the, the investor, that group, that management group and that real estate group actually was laterally investing and all this Aspen dental stuff. And it just started populating up. So I followed it incorrectly. So how many times have we done that during a Google? So that's on me, but clearly they have struggled. They've gone through a lot. They've never, some of the docs that do work there, they told me they were like, this is unreal. They didn't have access to patient charts. They didn't have access to any of their financial data. They didn't have access to, I mean, it was a complete lockdown. So um, what's the windup it was caused just from that software hack. Is that correct? There was held at ransom. Yeah. Hmm. That's big money. That always held at ransom. Yeah. So it's kind of like this episode brought to you by cybersecurity insurance. (laughs) It's like, (laughs) what time you have to do it? I mean, Uh, this episode brought to you by Dwight's stock picking company. So, Craig, was that (laughs) sufficient retraction or did that sound like? No, uh, I think it's fine as long as we, uh, as long as we've fully pulled it back. Yeah. Okay. We made a mistake. We made a mistake here at BP. Sometimes even even four dumbasses make a mistake. <laughs> On occasion. Imagine that. On occasion. We should go back to changing our name to Num Nuts again. Should go back to the analog <laughs> charts. Paper charts would solve this issue. Mm. Hey, Dwight, move your microphone closer. I, I want to hear that beautiful baritone you got. Uh huh. Thank you. Cheers. Don't, Hello, don't strip that from me. No, yeah. I can't take that from you, man. That's all you. Dwight, so anyway, it's been a while. Everybody's good here. You about to I, roast not, I don't have roast today, uh, man. I thought it was too okay. easy. Sorry, I've been building. Thought it was too oh. easy. Is that what you just said? It was too easy before, but remember, what did I say last time? It got a little, it got a little quiet on the last roast, and I, uh, I felt like I was boo booing some people, and I don't want to get to the point where it makes it awkward. I was supposed to visit Craig here shortly in Florida, and I don't want to like. Stand no, across Dwight, a couple you know beers I love you, buddy. To... That's not going to. Tr- that's not going to set up a tent but... for you on the in the backyard. He's like, like yeah, yeah, come on down, survive. man. Come on down. Enjoyed me at the right. ranch, but you're sleeping out there. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. La- we would. None of us would last one night out there. Oh no, no. I, I mean, maybe, not. but we'll see. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about some topics that we have texted. Well, before, let me right, talk Edie? about a topic that I want to talk about. Let right. me talk oh. about. 
Let 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 <laughs> no let me. No, really, the dictator. So I I I've, I've got my my uh, my feathers ruffled a little bit lately. Oh on yeah, Instagram. on Instagram. On Instagram, I got them ruffled. Well, ruffled. I, well, I I I got my feathers ruffled because you shared I'm in the same ruffle, didn't you? I'm oh. I, I'm on Instagram uh, twenty four point six of every hour of the day. Yes. Um, so it is the, the majority of his dopamine. Thing, remember? Yeah, I'm actually on it right now. Um, yeah, it's facing. Yeah. I'm pretending like I'm listening to you guys. Uh, <laughs> I saw this video and I got super pissed off and posted, sent it to Pete, and Pete posted too. So can we roll the tape? Uh, who's, yeah, who's our guy? Who, who's our person that does post production? So it's Brady, Brady Frank. Um, and by the way, Brady, we're we're calling you out because we we want to give you a chance to come on here and explain yourself. Let's, Let's Brady, you you have an open invitation. Whoever's listening to this, get this to Brady. We welcome you um, to have a chance to rebut from the ass kicking you're about to get from us. Uh, so. <laughs> If you don't sure. mind, Peter, All right, hold on. roll the tape. Practice. Consider this a warning to all dentists. If you don't think you're ready to sell your practice, you might want to reconsider. We are in a DSO bubble. We're at the height of it right now, and that bubble's about to pop. There's tens of billions of dollars pouring into dentistry right now, but that's going to be cut off in just a few short years. Every market goes up and down, real estate, business, crypto. You want to sell when you're at the height of the market. Right now, we are in a DSO bubble. How can you have the most of the billions that are flying into dentistry from private equity companies? You can do that right now. You can click on the link. I've got a calculator that will show you the ridiculous value your practice or group is worth in this incredible market where hundreds of billions of dollars are flowing into dentistry this decade alone and it's all gonna cut off once this DSO bubble pops. Click on the link, would love to help you through the process, see what your practice is worth, and maybe you'll be one of the haves in our incredible market in dentistry today. Consider this a war. Yeah, I bet you'd love to help me. Uh, hey, my practice, all right, Brady. to the two who haven't seen that. To the two me, who haven't. Me first, me first. Trey, have you seen it? No, no I've never seen Me first. So yeah. I posted something that was so bad, I had to take it down and repost it. But I'm like, please, <laughs> I said, dentist, please do not listen to this saber rattling bullshit. Oh, what an, oh, I'm going to leave it because so, he's coming back on. I, I was about to call him a bad name, but listen, it's not, it's fine. It's just, it's a, it's a little bit predatory. Don't you think guys? Uh, a not to mention, it's just like when somebody is that inflammatory and doesn't even know that. So at the beginning of it, he's like, it's millions it's tens of billions it's hundreds of billions which is truly the, the whole global dental market is worth like a two or three billion you know it's a gazillion dollars, dollars. Gazillion, you want to be billion you want to be living and having millions of dollars or you want to die in the street with your amalgamator and be yeah. looking for food scraps yeah. while the rest of us billionaires will be eating from gold goblets and drinking yeah. them. Poor he, sound, he sounds like me talking about the Aspen, you know, trade on the left. <laughs> He's not that bad, Dwight. <laughs> Dre, Trey, what, what, how does that land on you? Obviously, we know we're, we're, it's, we're getting into like theatrics of it, right? But he's, he's talking up his portfolio. This. Right. Obviously, it's a paid yeah. ad, yeah. and right, and it's something he believes in. Um, this, the, but well, the, it's something the, he gets paid for. But the so bubble. Me, I'll do the DSO calculator, and I'll sell you to Acme DSO and make a shit ton on your practice. I would argue that there is no bubble. This would be my counter arguments. There is no bubble. Yeah, there's agree. always people investing in your business. It's, nothing's about nothing's about to pop. We're not playing musical chairs where there's no seat left for you, and you just got screwed dentists warning i would argue that that valuations are predicated on interest rates most private equity buys you with leverage and so it's not drying up it's not popping it just might not be the best time to sell it's not the height of the market now but for everyone listening thinking that like oh shit i should act don't listen to this shit build well, your business focus on ebitda <clears throat> focus on cash flow focus on all those things to become bulletproof so you don't pray victim to shit like this that's gonna scare you i will say that 10 years ago you had 10 years left 
that's always the case. There's always, <laughs> yeah. there's always a winner. Oh, great. And great. by the way, do you think Starbucks coffees are going to be more or less valuable or costly in 10 years? Like the cheapest your latte will ever be with the latte you ordered today in two or three years or five years. And, and studies show, by the way, that as consolidation continued to roll forward, the multiples tend to stay the same or expand supply and demand as there's less practices. But first of all, I think before we get to that aspect, I, I really, I love what you guys started when I was on vacation. I call it team never sell mm -hmm. because when you hate your business and your business doesn't work for you, no matter what, you have to make a grand, a, a, a grand move to try to course correct it. Mm -hmm. But I'm of the persuasion and I'm thankful that there's voices that are reasonable in the three of you guys that there's a way through this and you can actually love your business. You can make your dental business great again and never have to sell it because for all those points that you said about freedom of direction, whether that's legacy, time, or relationships, the, there's the, the narrative is just getting to a point where it's deafening that the only way through is to sell. And if you don't, you're gonna be left out and blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's really a disservice to dentistry, Brady. Um, I want to have you on. I really do. I, I, I promise I'll be, I'll be respectful. But I want to know why you think that's a good message for dentists. I want you to answer that, what you really believe. And I want to take the economic interest out because, listen, we're all capitalists and we all want to make money. I want him to really defend that position. Because he's all what I know of him. He's always been a champion for dentistry. He yeah, was he's all nice about He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, but what is his history? What, what has he well, done? I, I think that's the key component here, right? <laughs> so what this sounds like to me is an individual who sold out to a DSO and now gets a writer for every time he brings another practice onto the same DSO. Has he, did and, he, did he I mean, have a large it, dental it practice? It sounds that, that way out? to me. Do I know that? I think no, we're just speculating. Let's not speculate yeah. until we no, get No, no, no. The way he's speaking though, right? So right. in the US, the way I like to think about it is people always talk about how big is Heartland, right? Because they're a billion dollar organization. That's a big number, right? But in the US, the US dental market is about 109 billion, right? So they're like one less than 1% is Heartland. If that helps you gain perspective on what we see as a big one percent of the of the whole U.S. market, right? Of the whole U.S. market. Yeah, yeah. And they're a billion dollar organization, so a lot of people are like, "Heartland's coming after me." They're a whole one percent. Yeah, there's a ninety nine percent chance yeah. Heartland doesn't know who you are. Exactly. Because they're only one percent. Thousand percent. Yeah, exactly. So when you hear someone yelling that mm -hmm. you know venture capital and private equity are putting in hundreds of billions. So they're buying the industry of the United States multiple times over. <laughs> Clearly, he doesn't know what he's talking about in numbers. Clearly, he doesn't understand. He's just a sales guy. And that's why it makes me feel like, hey, Brady's probably in a situation where he's given a percentage of every sale and you know acquisition that he brings into it a bit. And that's okay. I get it. But be vulnerable. Like, if I'm going to come on here and talk about patient prism or some other thing and I get paid for them, I should tell you guys, Hey, by the way, but that's, I think that's where I don't align with somebody yelling from the hilltops and putting all these little graphs on his Instagram and being that volatile in an industry that if I'm being honest, a lot of doctors struggle on the day to day today. It's a very vulnerable profession where it's like, I feel alone. I don't feel like I figured it out. The cost of my hygienist is skyrocketing. Can I really do this? And then you've got people just yelling like that. The Dwight, truth is, it's aggressive. Oh, before we have to do another retraction in next episode, I want to correct you on something. <laughs> Go for it. I'll pull it up too. The total dental spending in the United States is $162 billion per year. Spending. 2021 right so so a couple billion isn't the entire market like you said I just want to be clear i'm not i'm not trying to crush it i'm just trying to say like let's the stats are important a hundred uh, billion 62 billion was the patient spending in the united states in in 2021 um and that is up to 14 billion from 2020 Right, which is which was uh obviously a pandemic year oh you're talking and, about and spending i'm pulling total market value which okay, is what they're like, buying. so they're buying of the market value. So our market as our industry is considered 109 billion. And by 2027, it's supposed to hit 197 billion. Okay. So what, what a venture capital firm or a private equity firm is purchasing in portions of that industry is relative to that. So when I say that a net value of an enterprise like 
Heartland might be at a billion dollars or plus in equity, they're still a small portion of the total industry size. Co correct. But that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm just there was a there was something that was said that was basically like we were making fun of that that Instagram ad and basically you're we saying the billions like the billions is like kind of the whole entire market, right? So yeah, now we know saying hundreds of billions. Oh, he's, I didn't hear hundreds of billions. He said he started with tens of billions and then he said hundreds of billions. And I wrote that yes. down like this guy's crazy. That's like multiple industries in one. Escalated fast. Well, so obviously, let's, uh, he, you know, I'm on his I think, website and I don't want to make this all about the Brady ass kicking here, but like his, mm -hmm. I guess what he is, is he owns this thing called total dental freedom, how to learn how to achieve total dental freedom. And he always said, our systems build your practices, though it's a blueprint courses and all that to, to build, accelerate your financial freedom through goals and through the blueprint. That is not it. That is not what he's promoting right now, Craig. Just no, so no, know. of course not. But that's what uh, his on his website is how to do this. And I was just like, check get the out. hell out. The Titanic was sinking. <laughs> it's become the DSO, right? So he's basically saying like, that's the name of the. So of now this. it's no longer just be acquired by the DSO. Is that what I'm hearing? I right. think we need we need to zoom out on this as well, though, because you can get lost in the weeds of this one particular case, but. What Dwight talked about just then was a lot of dentists struggle with rising costs and a lot of other things facing down an economic downturn. There's there's all sorts of things that you have that that are uh, on a day to day basis, making people struggle in the operations of their their single practice to, to hit the 80%. And one of the sad parts of our industry is that the vast, I mean, not the vast, the biggest problem I think we face is other dentists. It's people standing on the hilltops shouting certain things. It's I mean, there's some uh, there's some great stories of stuff that's happened in, in <clears throat> Houston and Texas of guys. I mean, think back of guys that championed anti DSO, and then they sold the one, they right, put you down at it's dishonest compliments to yourself instead of actually trying to further a further an industry driving forward. And and I think that's that is epitomized on the smallest level by a patient, you know, throwing an, uh, you know, talking about another dentist, throwing another dentist under the bus. And you see that left and right with dentists, whereas you see it almost never in medicine or very rarely in medicine compared to dentistry. And all we do is shoot ourselves in the foot. So let's point, let's pivot a little bit, not completely off topic, Trey, um, cause like, I do agree with your last statement. But, you know, as, as Craig, we talked about, um, you know, how the patient experience, right? We talked about things about the patient experience and how that is an advantage to the practice that can operate the ground game at a local level versus this big national conglomerates. Usually they can't have the same patient experience, ground game, relationship, all that stuff. What do you guys think? In order to not bring, and I use this this quote on the last pod we just did a second ago, talking to um, patient prison the mall, I said, you know, we don't want to bring a knife to a gunfight. Let's just and 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 I don't want to make it in metaphorically like it's a war. It's us versus them, but it's competition but it's, and competition is battle. Uh, you know, when two NBA okay, teams battle's go, better. Maybe not battle. war. Maybe yeah, war so, sounds like you're just hitting another person. You just and and what I'm discovering is that there's tools that that business people use, tools that that big groups use that that either we don't have the access to, or are a little bit more, or, or too expensive, either from a procurement perspective, technology that we haven't been exposed to because they're, they're the technology platforms are focusing more on the bigger quote unquote bigger customers, right? Right. So they're getting better tech, better pricing. Um, not better, not necessarily, there's no advantage in people and hiring, right? It's still competitive there. Where I'm going with this question is where is the playing field on level? Oh, she's in so many places, guys. Well, tell so me, many places tell me, because I think that's where you start. Pro okay. So listen, the, so the reason procurement number one. Okay. You tell know, me more. You could be doing a, a diamond plus provider level of, of Invisalign or, or, you know, it'd be a top notch candid provider and the larger DSOs for clear aligners are going to charge, you know, day one, their first case, those doctors that come out of school get charged the less fee, um, supplies, you know, no matter how big you get, you're not going to buy those sundries and supplies as much as a DSO insurance you have negotiation power with insurance companies those big insurance companies will pay dso doctors 
more for that same exact crown than you would get paid. Um, technology, like Patient Prism, like we talked about, you know, that they, the, the, I asked them all, we just had a podcast with them, what percentage uh, of your clients are DSO? What percentage are private? He says, no, 95% DSO. So they're u- literally using AI to listen to your calls. And all of us, Jackson Holes, are like listen, like trying to get through our calls. Call monitoring. Like, re- call I think monitoring. Sally monitor Sue's yeah. calls. Like ridiculous. Right. So like yeah. they have those tools, um, you know, scale in the um, in a geographic footprint, you know, um, recruitment strategies into dental schools. Year one, they're sponsoring socials that their dentists are attending and the freshman orientation, freshman orientation brought, brought to you by Acme DSO. Um, uh, lobby power, lobbyists. So they actually they're going to our state uh, legislation and they're they're affecting positive change that works in their favor. Um, those are just the things off the top of my head. What what about you guys? That was pretty comprehensive. I was yeah, going to get you to start. All right, so Craig, let's let's run with that. And this is a question to you, having just presented all that. Now flip the script. Yeah. What is the unlevel playing field of an well, individual practice provider of a single location? So so that's an easy one. This is our greatest strength. At the end of the day, um, a lot of these companies, a lot of the, the, the large DSOs are private equity backed. And private equity is really smart and good, but private equity has short time horizons. They want to make returns that are faster. So at the end of the game, at the end of the day, this business is a people business. Like our last podcast, it can't be managed by a spreadsheet. It has people, humans behind it. And for those of us who are independent dentists that are listening to this, and the four of us are, we can win on the people all day long. There's nothing better than a founder that's still present and that can be part of it. Although some some have amazing founders, we Peter and I know one that's amazing, private equity backed. And but I think the people we can we can always win on that. And the investor pressure gets in the way. We don't have investor pressure. We we make when, decisions that are when based you say on people, longer. Craig, when you say people, you. you... What do you the mean? The dentist, the team, the actual okay. human capital. Which then practice. translates to kind of that patient experience, that tangible. Yeah, but they can like, be yeah. on that. They they can do really well. I mean, listen, I, as I said in the last. Dwight's, you know, Dwight's I, saying, me, not so much. I actually believe, I think guys, they're competing I'm, heavy on I'm, people. I'm going to say something that will probably get me in hot water with you guys. But this is what I believe. I believe that the average dental de- dental office that's a dso the average dso office the average is better run and possibly more standardized and more, more adherent to the standard of care than the average independent office do you guys I'll believe say that? that again why are you clapping why, because I, it's I, so freaking true they are okay they have good so i got one I, 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 yeah. hey, trey's getting I uncomfortable think, yeah no I, I agree with you from the standpoint of it is it is run that way i think the standard of care is is actually similar across the board you have <clears> good good well well run offices dso okay let me let me phrase it to a different way your wife yeah, breaks again. a tooth in a different city one where you don't know anybody do you want her going to um uh, the the local uh, pick your DSO, Pacific, Heartland, I mean, the big boys. No. Aspen, or do you want her going to the local okay. random private dentist that's a single dentist? Yeah, single random. office. You're trying to throw that random. It wasn't have to be random. Right. You're local, well, random, random you're going to the random brand. Shop. It's like because the range is much the larger. What he's saying is the range yeah, is much I, larger with the really good, highs and the really yes, low right. than the DSOs Correct. who have a very structured and scaled method. And they don't let doctors go rogue on doing procedures right. that they really right. shouldn't be doing. And you can bet your bottom dollar the autoclave water was changed in the last two weeks. I know some private offices. There's like, a sign-off what do you mean the water has to be changed? What do you mean? That you have to change the water in your sterilizer? <laughs> What's a trap? Yes. What's a trap? <laughs> yeah, open it up and like a green <laughs> sea it in. What's a score test? Yeah, what, what is this? it's true, guys. It's I'm not kidding. No, I, I agree I, that the range that's, is that and that's why I think that you're right. This the the procedural aspect of things are far more standardized. No argument there. Right. Yeah. Right. But the people aspect is not but it has no bearing on quality of dentistry. I agree. I agree, Trey. I'm in Trey's camp on this one. Yeah. No bearing. That's, that's, that's how the sides of our screens are aligned. Like 
yeah. Trey we're we're being here. the left and yeah, those but, guys oh boy, being the right. What I'm talking about is in the in the private sector, you have exceptional and you have holy shit. This is scary. Like I can't believe like people don't get sick from like okay. tuberculosis when you I there. actually do agree Correct. with that. You're right. Okay. Because I've been allowed to go into in offices. The yeah. Yeah, but I've gone into offices where the the dichotomy of care in private practice is crazy, is what you're saying. Right. And in, in yes. a really well established, well run DSO, it's you'll have good and fine, but you won't have holy shit. There's systems, protocols, dangerous dental people looking over. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some dentists out there that haven't had another dentist look at their x rays since they graduated dental school and they've been out for 30 years. I've sat across from somebody literally who looked at me and was like, I don't like spending all that money on those dental posts. I just use paper clips. Yeah. Shut oh, yeah. up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, Absolutely. no. Real. I've had Absolutely. auto that autoclave water changing story is a real thing. I talked to I've, my Patterson. I've, I've experienced that. Too. All right. So They've let's never let's, change the let's water. Ever. Let's. That, well, with that being said, let me let me add to what he asked. Let me. Hi, make, no, 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 no. Just pause. Pause for a second. Okay, Jake. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not asking that so we can go down this route of like, who is better. Where I'm going is is like I want to just talk about take the care out of it for a second. Right. And Craig, I think your point's valid. And I think train, I disagree a little bit, but I think it's fun to, to talk about this, but like, where is there going to be some action? Where is there going to be some solutions solved or from a competition standpoint, right? If, if, if we're if Craig, if all the things you listed five things, right? You listed procurement, you listed insurance, but you listed, um, you listed training, education, like all those things to truly compete then. There needs to be solutions in place for that. Would you guys agree? Yeah, of course. Now there's other there's other benefits, which is what Trey was asking about, that are more relevant to the fact of choosing private practice versus entering a DSO. And there's it's the other side of the coin. <clears throat> and I think mean? more of it. What? Go what ahead. do you mean? What do you mean by the Trey's Trey's other point? What do you mean? Trey is saying, if you flip, if Craig says, well, what flip the other side of what Craig was saying, what are the benefits to be able to Trust. avoid that side of it and realizing what are the benefits of being able to run your own business uh -huh. that is competitive against that other factor? And most of it has to do with net personal worth, owning verticals, owning buildings. Like okay. if you're part of DSO, they're not going to allow you to extrapolate the verticals or owning the lab or owning merchandising or ordering or anything. To you don't have that freedom of direction. You don't have the autonomy. Yep. the freedom of direction and the ability to kind of scale your own personal net worth based on the verticals of your building that normally would be paid. Otherwise their models are very tight and very structured. So they're not going to let you just kind of jump out and do this as yeah, well. The entrepreneurialism is handled by them. They got it. They're like, we have this from here. Sit down, sit right. down. We got this. Right. And I think the other item that you all talked about, which relates to personal fulfillment, happiness, all those other things relates that your personal horizon can be in alignment with your business horizon, which is not always the case with, hey, I want to grow and scale and push this. At this point in time, I want to settle. At this point in time, I want to sell. That that usually is alignment on a personal side and it serves my personal need. Whereas when you grow with the DSO, you're right. They're going to sell you every three to five years based to a new private equity company and the rules are going to change and the dynamics are going to change. And so those are some of those other items that, I mean, I wrote down when you were asking some of that for sure. Tax strategies, verticals, distributions versus pay, all that other component, right? Th those are the pieces, right? Yeah. Now, how do they balance is the true question. Right? Yeah. What no. you're asking? Yes. So what I mean, are the solutions on that back end? You know, I don't, I'm not saying I have the solutions. I'm just saying, I think the point of, of me asking is to A, just throw something in the sand. I know it's obvious to a lot of people, but like, just put, put it down in the, in, in, you know, Put it down on on the battlefield. Here are the, here are the distinct disadvantages I have in, in this battle. Yeah. And like now, I need to go and solve, or we need to go and solve for that. I like where you're going, Peter? I like where you're yeah. going. Yeah. And also, I, I think if we're being um, sorry to use the term intellectually honest here, <laughs> we are all speaking from a place you, right? of of business privilege in that we all have grown to a certain level of scale right. and we have benefits afforded to us individually, not even using each other that help us um, mitigate the competitive advantage to the DSO. 
So my, I mean, Craig, we, honestly, we're, we were passionate about the, you know, like the BP Alliance and we were all kind of talking was, about yeah. that and it's like the holding hands and make us stronger together and like all that stuff. But like, unfortunately it proves to be too daunting from a legal you know, state yeah, yeah, level. Yeah. The right. complexities to execute that are millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, we, we, we spent a lot of money with, with attorneys to say like, okay, we're going to buy it. Well, if you buy into them, you're going to have you're subordinate to their loans and holy shit. I'm like, so we're just, just trying. And, and honestly, at the end of the day, their advice was just do it the way it's always been done. Yeah, that's just easy. Just practice. do it that way. You'll make a lot of money. And it was like, that's not, that's not what we started this conversation as. Yeah. So it's something look, still needs to be done though. Guys. Right. But I think, I, I think a, a, a point of it is Craig, as opposed to if all that shit is too complicated, like there's gotta be easier ways to just give everyone the same weapons. Yeah. I like right. That. That's it. That's it. Don't bring, don't bring a, don't bring a knife to a gunfight and, and, and just make it eat, make it level. And so that, I think that's where, where I'm going with that whole, that whole bubble popping and DSO is going to eat your lunch and better do it now. Cause all the money's going to dry up like that. This is the full landing of the plane of like, that's all bullshit, but I think there are problems to solve. Yeah, but it's not go run for the hills. That's it's not run for the hills. And it's definitely not surrender because a bubble is popping. That sure as shit is not the answer. Yeah. So, but that's, but that's where Brady Frank is in his in his own horizon, right? Of his course. own runway, and that's where he's at. I mean, I even looked his his stuff up. I mean, clearly he's bought and sold multiple dental groups, and now this, you know, the Freedom Dental Group was a co op of two hundred and fifty dental practices, which what y'all are talking about, same type of mindset for higher valuations and negotiating power, and. I don't, I haven't researched enough, but then the next step would probably be sell that at a very high multiple and go down that road. And that's why he's on that back end of that horizon. So it's just dependent on where you're at. But right now the ability is to have the ability to have autonomy, to decide that freedom of direction. Where do you want to go? Where does your family need you to go? What do you want to do? The best, best tool for me in dentistry is this pod masterminds collaboration. You all hold me to grow, to build, to maintain quality of care while also doing that and to build incredible culture, right? All those components. That's <laughs> where the game is. Dwight, I don't know if we hold you. Here's here's what I'm going to give you a compliment. We don't hold you to it is that you will hear something and audit audit where you are and then you will deploy action based on that, right? So it's not that no one, anyone's holding you to it. You just You're just a human who takes action based on the new information that you now have. That's what we got to do. Full stop. That like yeah, many people most do don't. not most do don't. that. Many people most do not take action because and they and they say things like, "Well, not done yet." You know why? Because I'm a perfectionist. You know, just can't can't get it perfect. And as we know, perfection is the enemy of execution. That's just an excuse yeah. to say like, "I'm not ready to take that chance." <clears throat> so sometimes, like you know, like you know, um, for instance, Facebook's thing right with um, what's the guy's name of Facebook? I don't know. Why I'm drawing a blank. Zuckerberg. The robot Zuckerberg, right? He was like, let's move fast and break things was the motto at Facebook for a while. Yeah. And it's basically just giving them full, full car blanche freedom to just run and go and take risks and these moonshot things. And it was a pretty cool thing to do. Right. And I think he pulled that back a little bit, but like, I would say as an industry, we are the exact opposite. Oh, absolutely. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many questions I get when I have docs come in, we're collaborating here at my central office and like my logo for my management company literally underneath it says progress over perfection and people are like i mean they're dumbfounded they're like what do you mean do you mean your margins are open I'm like no you idiot I'm like <laughs> it means it means growth it means focus and understand that we you know in order to grow you must first break you must change what it is that you've thought is status quo and transition that and sometimes we don't have all the answers Sometimes it requires a step of faith and realizing that you've built a good enough team around them, everybody on your team or yourself. You have enough grit to push through when you fall flat on your face, you get up and go. But what I fear is, is exactly right what you're saying. I see young dentists who are just graduating out. They're in their 20s they're in their early 30s. And absolutely in life, for the amount of money you have access to make it, as a dentist, right? And the walls are up. It's hard to become part of this profession. All the things it takes, right? The barriers of entry are high. On top of that, they're not willing to take risk because they're scared. And at their 20s and 30s, now is when you do it. You double down. 
Some of us are doing it in thirties and forties. Hey, I turn 40 tomorrow, by the way. And so as we keep pushing along, you do? Really yeah, tomorrow's my 40th. Damn. So you get to that point, you keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Why not? You've got the ability to do it. And I can't tell you how many other industries, how many professionals in other industries across the board, even just in healthcare, forget other industries are saying the profit margins we're dealing with, the opportunity risk is so low to go and just say, hey, let's just do it. The risk is really not that bad, but we're scared to death because it has to be perfect. Right. And therefore we can't move forward. And that's where I struggle the most is seeing that in so many people. But that's why I bring up the mastermind and bring up us interacting and, you know, just spending time together because I think I sit here and I listen. And when somebody, even on the, on the last office hours, you know, Peter, you, you cracked into something that I've had set as a protocol for a while and how right. I pay my doctors, those things. And what I love about yeah. it is you're like, Hey, you were coming down on me. Cause you really wanted to make sure that Dwight has figured that process out from A to B to C all the way down to Z to understand, Hey, I've actually worked through this. I understand it. And why I have a why, but maybe I need to work on it a little bit. That's, that's what makes us better. But I'm with you. Like you do have to implement, you've got to make it happen or else what's the point, right? We're just a bunch of talking heads saying, let's just go about it. And you know, reminisce reminisce or talk trash about how the good old days used to be or dentistry was better back in the day and now everybody's just trying to take advantage of of us i think that's why consolidation is happening so quickly in our industry is because people are just either a scared to change and create a risk or b they just think the the hill is too high to climb i just can't do this so there's your solution Pete. there is Chall one challenge the status quo correct yeah, but that's so like, but that's just so like. There's granular. Bring it down. No, I don't. Find, I mean, find yeah, the I, granular theory from that. I'm all ears. I, I don't. I, I don't. I'm not saying I, I don't have the ability to give solutions right now. I, I just the point of me bringing that up honestly was just identify the problems and then like let's let it marinate. And like eat the elephant one bite at a time is really all I was doing. And maybe we maybe we dissect some of these in future pods. But I think the conversation was just the spirit of conversation was just like, let's just talk about this. Let's talk about this battlefield for a second. And and maybe yeah. battlefield's the, the wrong metaphor. Like, but this chessboard. Let's talk about this chessboard, right? And do we have the right pawns? Pawns, kings, queens, whatever's on chess. I was about to say, do you play chess? Bishop? No, I don't play chess. <laughs> I wish. Obviously. Chess, is, chess is for smart people. Yeah. Come on, bro. You would be a great chess player, man. Uh, he would. That's yeah, for sure. You would, man. Uh, I'd get pissed off and I'd flip the board, Dwight, and be like, God, you nerds. Full stop. Full stop. I won't let my kids win, though. I'm like, no, no, no. You will beat me one day, but not today. We play all the time. I'm like, you got to do it. You've got to learn it. You'd be good at it, Pete. Uh, thanks, Dwight. Um. So I'm kind of I'm kind of going through other topics, right? Because there's so many things. I'm looking at this at the at the at the list of other topics I want to talk about and loop into our podcast. And there's so many things, but they're not they're not very good tangents from from today. Um, but I will tell you hard, one, hard of it. Okay. Well, I've been well, studying I've been studying other companies outside of dentistry just as a as a little bit interesting thing. What would you guys say? Is the most impressive company on the planet? Mm, that's so easy, Tesla. What? No, Tesla Space. Uh, okay, from a t tech standpoint, maybe. No, but overall change to pot to mm. humanity. No, why? Because they put batteries and and attached them to motors. No, be, I mean, well, Elon's company, SpaceX, Tesla, providing internet to the world. Holy okay, shit! Okay, so that's SpaceX. That's not Tesla. Okay, well, I put it together. It's just it's the Elon Musk <laughs> companies. All of Elon, Elon Musk Muskrat. at all. The umbrella. It's the umbrella. The umbrella all of Elon, Elon Musk. Right. All of Musk. I mean, what are you what are you saying? The largest just I'm just saying like control, power, at, revenue, what? Look at the size, look at the logistics, look at the people, look at the amount of employees, look at look at all look at the, the, the customer service, all the whole things. Amazon. Amazon? Okay. All right. Okay. What what does everybody say? So Trey, what do you say? Ford trucks? Ford trucks, that's right. <laughs> The Free antler company, cattle, <laughs> cattle guard. I'm about cattle diesel. Piece. I'm about diesel. Oh, uh, you know, I would, I, you got you have to go with tech because of the impact on what Craig said. It's the impact on humanity long term. Well, what is it? Well, that's I not. But that's not okay. All right, well, maybe, listen, maybe, well, listen. Would, this is Trey's thought. You don't have to would, tell me what you think I, of Trey's thought. What's yeah. what's your thought? 
Yeah, fuck you guys. This is my thought. <laughs> Tell me. Go. Get I it would, out. I would agree with you. I would go with SpaceX. I think okay. that's the coolest. Mm -hmm. the, okay, we've got I one for SpaceX, one the, for Amazon. Peter, what's yours? Pornhub? Go ahead. Let's hear it. Yeah, exactly. It's super impressive. It's changing humanity. All in the palm of our hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Come on, man. We're losing right. listeners oh, yeah. <laughs> Delta, Delta Airlines. Uh, Let me tell you why. Uh, no. Can I tell them why? No, Can no. I tell them why? I know why? where you're going with it. Why? Because Peter is. We all have six human needs. Peter's top four are significance, and Delta decided <laughs> to send Peter. No, 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 that's not why. Craig. But they did do it though. Yeah, they <laughs> they did send too, him though. like this invite only, like extra black plutonium card or whatever the hell it was it was like enriched uranium card you wave it and people bow to you a kryptonite and, killer yeah it's a kryptonite it's a kryptonite card all right he can go Here's anywhere in the world he wants thanks, for free right. all thanks, the time Craig. that's not Isn't true that in atlanta all right. so look, airline that the thing. it deals with but atlanta it deals with right. Trump. <laughs> we don't know of a Delta. So yes, go ahead. Tell Amazon, us, what do they do, by the way? Amazon is moving do? boxes. That's logistics. They're great at logistics, right? Moving boxes around. But Delta is logistics plus people, right? Plus customer service, plus is highly, it, it, highly technical it, pieces of equipment called jet engines. And plus, plus they have, you know, it's just, I don't know. I'm just, it's revolutionary. Here's, here's my question. Yeah. How but, many but, Delta boxes are on your front patio right now? <laughs> Let's be honest. None. Why All right. Delta, you know what? Though, Peter? Why Delta? Yeah. Unpack it. Let's. Why Delta? Go ahead. Go ahead. Because A, to be able, so 80,000 employees. Okay. N not just okay. doing, not just in the business of moving people. Yes, I know. But it's moving people on, on extraordinarily complex machinery. Okay. Okay. On a system, connecting people through different cities. I'm just saying from a logistics standpoint, and people Amazon, are- You're saying logistics? Amazon's you, 1.5 you million. Amazon they own logistics. their own logistics company. That, well, it's like, but they're moving boxes that don't have to get there on time and there's then aren't people, connecting to it, other there's cities. There's people moving boxes too. And there's robots <laughs> and everything. There's so 1.5 million Amazon employees. Of people through, so yeah. what you're saying that you'd in rather, a, if you could pick one flies. stock, <laughs> Peter, if oh you could pick God. one stock to own, you would own Delta over Amazon? No, it's not a stock. I just think it's impressive. But it's the it, most impressive company. What was the question you asked? What's the best company in the world? No, what's the, the greatest Tip company in the world? Group. The greatest company in the world means it's also synonymous with if you had to pick one company to invest in, what would that company be? In my That's mind. That's not synonymous, in my opinion. Tip it, dental group. Okay, here, here, I love this so company. Well. I, it's the greatest, but I don't want to invest in I don't have any Delta stock, Craig. You guys, all I'm trying to do is ideate for podcast and give something and draw a parallel and you guys are literally just just stepping on the throat of the uh, of the of the greatest well I mean, no, it's because you, you live could... in atlanta so delta means all right you, fine. okay like i get it and that's you know here it's united but would you take united i don't know like oh no. i i get the value that is the largest airline right you got large revenue Let, let's get off of it because now people are like oh, this is not no, really you just don't great. like you just don't like that we don't like your answer no I, I look i'm a big enough boy to say fine fine everyone's entitled but like i still believe it i thought you were gonna say like apple or going down yeah, the road those, of like, those are all tech like it's it's easy to create tech tech it's harder in dentistry where it's going is like the thing in dentistry is it's hard we have we have a clinical science that's wrapped around a patient experience that's wrapped around all the things of being an entrepreneur and growing and things. And so sometimes you can just learn from studying other companies, right. but we can't do that from studying Tesla. You can oh, learn. Of course, we can. of course we can. Of course we can learn. Oh, uh, says, a how to adopt. says a trailblazer. I love no, that. no. I, I mean, that. listen, I, I, um, I mean, what Scott Galloway called, SMU oh, Tesla called you the Tesla of dentistry. Right, so you, but, you're saying you have an why, affinity why, towards something why that he, you're getting an accolade for. No, but why, why, why would he say that? Why, why are feel. your practices more like Tesla? I'll tell you why. Because you don't have to talk to a human. You could, you could pay on your website. You use technology that most people are like, holy shit, I've never seen this. You, most dentists are still choking their patients with impression material, taking impressions of yeah. their descending palate. And, and half of their trachea. Pull, you ever pull out an impression that's nine inches long, like the back mm -hmm. of their throat? We're scanning people. Like that to, Craig, to us. Is that what you're saying? It's nine inches long again? Yeah, going. the back of your throat. <laughs> that's how it works. I've measured it. Nine, um, ten. Anyway. Hey, this big. So Dwight, this you're building, big. I'm going to get off this topic because- Go I, on, please, yes. This is turning right, you're into- build, You're building an office people. right now. You're building yeah. an office right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Craig, I'm, going, I'm, looping, I'm, I'm correlating it to what you're saying. Did you consider or are you considering going receptionless? 
Uh, my receptions are smaller, I would say, than mm. I would have originally probably started building um, because of the fact of I choose to create more flow and a lot more of it is digital. Most patients are checking in in the parking lot or before oh, they get there. So like, no, yes, 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 yes or no. Yes. <laughs> I said, I said they're smaller. No, yes. you did it. You just dropped salad on us. <laughs> I said, okay. So what do you want me to say? <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, no. I said no to reception list. Salad. <laughs> it's smaller than before. <laughs> So listen, let me just, can I, can I have a little bit of, I have, I have a rare no, no, moment. Of, he asked I have a rare question, moment. I'm going to answer actually, his question. So I have a rare me, moment. Is the building moment that I'm building receptionless? And I said, no, but it is smaller than it was before. Okay. No, it's fine. How would no, you answer not building from receptionless. That. Okay. So Tesla, you can actually, I've never bought a Tesla before, but from what I understand, I have, you go I and you show up and you, the car is there. Correct. You don't yes. speak to a person and all this stuff. No, you just we, walk up to it. You walk up to it and that's your car and somehow, you, you know, it. I don't even know. Yep. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that patients don't want to speak to the receptionist either. They don't want to go and review their medical history and have someone there and be like, by, by, uh, mm -hmm. by, by communicable diseases. What does that mean? Like the mm -hmm. medical history is embarrassing for some people, especially Trey. So I think the most important thing is that if people can skip having a human in certain processes, that's a better mm -hmm. experience. Maybe not up until the dentistry. But, you know, a, 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 an intelligent AI to, to handle post-operative calls that pr pr provides more value, um, ability to make appointments without having to call and play phone tag. So I, I do think that we, as dental professionals, can learn a lot from a tech company. I really so do. Are you, are you saying that, that the rare direction... moment or do you have another one? No, the rare moment's still in my head. I, I'm going to launch it at the right time. That wasn't so Here's that, my that wasn't... question. Are you telling me that eventually... Not necessarily that you won't have a reception room because you do have to have a space, in my opinion, for family and such to wait, right? If they're having a station or something to that degree. Somewhere to wait. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. question somewhere is, to, are you, are you, are you have... saying a receptionist no, no, is no, no, no longer there? A person that greets you and says, welcome, Mrs. Jones. Right. Do you, you see, you, you, for, of course, you need to have a reception area because right. unless you just going to so my thought my thought on on that is, all the time craig do you ever see that happening in your practice because you're very big on person to person touch like you didn't even want your front desk to be wearing scrubs like in the back you wanted them to be dressed up all nice because you wanted to feel like a spa reception feel so i'm interested in hearing if, if that dynamic has shifted over time like i'm curious yeah so so again we're cutting with broad brush strokes i think if you have a certain type of dental practice like the average dental practice where you're just doing more basic restorative. And, you know, I, I actually think I see dentistry hybridizing into a whole bunch of models. One model being like almost like the tend model in New York where flexible hygiene, it's all about ancillary preventive services and a little bit of restorative. My practice is like really a lot of heavy geared restorative, larger treatment plans, like some of y'all's as well. Sure. And that I think is a different answer depending on the model. So I, I think just like Supercuts and Starbucks fill a great need. Um, I see the majority of dental practice being like commoditized like that, like a Starbucks, like we mm -hmm. can go in for a predictable cleaning and a predictable re-cement. Those practices will go receptionless before practices like maybe mine do, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think it would be an added value. To the I saw a model. statistic and I can't find it now, but basically, and this was directly post COVID right after it, but it was basically like took a survey of people and was like, would you rather check in with, a tablet or would you rather meet and greet the receptionist that's at, at the front and it wasn't a close sec i mean it was it wasn't even a close it was like 70 percent. i'll have to pull it up and find that stat but it was like 70 percent of people would actually be preferred prefer to interact with a tablet that i read that it is a step further than that it be would they would rather wait in line to register with the tablet and avoid no line with the person. oh yeah it maybe you're that, right it right. is that serious yeah. So that being said, like Dwight, that's why I was asking you, you're in the active phase of building, right? I'm actually, I'm actually in, in active construction right now in another office as well, like you know, yeah. cutting concrete and all that stuff. And, and, and I had the opportunity to look at the floor plan and be like, Hmm, I, I know that that's what the, the, the model said, or the survey said that Trey and I are looking at, but I'm still stuck maybe in the old school ways of like, I just feel like there needs to be a human you need to see. I and Whatever I kept, happens, yeah. and now I did, shrink the size like dwight's saying shrink the the area down in which people congregate 
Craig, you have about what four thousand square feet in your in your. Yeah, I think it's room? forty-seven thousand square feet of uh, reception. <laughs> I was about to say. Yeah, forty-nine thousand. Craig literally can land a helicopter in his waiting room. Um, it's an option. Craig, just making in, all right. Let me ask you this: in but hindsight, you know, try to not speak from a confirmational bias. In hindsight, would you go a little smaller? I mean, listen, I don't. Yes or no? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do anything different. All right. Because, no, because I, I think I'm I'm redesigning my office now and I'm expanding. Right. And to answer your question directly, a lot of the area that was made for reception is going to be chewed up by lab. So it's going to be smaller. Yes. Okay. But right. how did I know? How did I know what I was going to need? Of course you didn't. Of course yeah. you didn't. I'm just saying now with the data that you have, information yeah. that you have, what would you have done it differently? Because I think that's how we yeah, help people who are listening to this pod. But it's it was like, also 10 years ago. So everything's different in 10 hey, years. Well, hey. with that being said, like so I shame. built, yeah, I built, uh, for example, my large 10,000 square foot Missouri City office. You will remember that one. I've now added six operatories to that i've i've already done renovations wait what'd you start with and what do you have now 16 i'm going to 22. so what spaces did you chew up i've i've i'm now moving the lab or, or half the oh, lab okay, out okay. um all my operations wing that used to got be it. hr accounting fine operations in general has now moved to central offices like have you added on better. exterior square footage or you're just doing interior no, remodel it's all interior remodel so i mean that's me and it's 2023 and we moved in in 2022 like in the middle of covid march 2020 2020 yeah so in three so, years so it's been three years and we've already worked on the building two more times since we moved in yeah my, time, my advice to those changing. that are building their own building by the way dwight you included is i would float my floor because um you can put a sub floor in so you could like literally there's a system where your floors maybe i don't know eight inches above the concrete no. slab it's six yeah you're right you bet you're six right inches, whatever yeah. i would recommend highly that you do that because once your plumbing is in it's really hard to reconfigure it. but if you can lift your floor up if there's a sub floor uh, if there's another flooring mechanism and, and you could lift up your floor and junction onto your air water vacuum and you know suction i mean suction and air water yeah. you can actually refit and take your admin spaces out because that's just huge i would absolutely do that and if you're building something like think about the future think about your private office becoming an op and put a t on your plumbing put a t and put it in the wall and like just mark it yeah. you can mark it with a junction box on the inside of the junction box you could write future op or whatever but well, think yeah, about and, the future and the same way that we made all hygiene ops this was in 2020 all hygiene ops are no. ready to do general dentistry yes 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 work and you know and then just recently they accepted in texas legislature or uh, texas uh, tda for our hygienists to give anesthesia and our assistants yeah. just start filling filling like <laughs> we're already going and that's texas which we thought we were going to be the last state by the way mm -hmm. that any of that would happen and clearly that's moving quickly now if that's happening in texas that's going to spiral pretty quickly throughout but i think that's what i had to build something that was prepped for that it was built it, it is built for mid-level providers and that is the understanding so i think it's just important for everybody to I remember agree. there's the business you're in and the business you're becoming and there's always a, there's always something that's evolving. There's that, and you have the market will tell you what's your va what what's your validity and what's your. This your is not a rhetorical is. question. I'm about to ask you guys. <clears throat> you guys all know we all know a lot of the same dentists. We also know a lot of different dentists. Okay, we talk and we probably mentor some of those people. Okay, have you ever? This is this is not rhetorical. Have you ever heard someone say, you know, I really just built this office too damn big. Like someone who got in trouble building, building something oh, yeah. bigger than that. their dreams, right? Bigger than, than what their, uh, their dreams didn't match the reality of, of putting patients in the chair, so to speak, mm -hmm. getting providers or, and, and, and okay, table that for a second. And then how many times have you heard someone saying really need more space? Well, well it's also, also a little time. confirmation it's bias. Everybody no, it's not. Space. I, I Again, again, Craig, I'm just asking, I'm not saying this doesn't confirm any of my biases. I, I know what I like. I'm just, I'm saying like, if there's a disproportionate amount of people, then would it be wise to, to advise people like, look, 
go big because chances are you're right or go with your 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 preconceived notion about what you can do because chances are you are right no i, I would never I would say that to that. somebody you wouldn't yeah every everybody that ever told me is you're going to build too small and you're not going to build fast enough and, yeah, but you, again, and that has been the case for me every time now you given built, you're not the small, average person do i get you're it not the i get it person. but with that being said i have throttled myself on these new locations to not build out a full 10,000 plus square foot location everywhere. I prefer to have more multiple locations at a smaller build specific 10 ops and not going over that. Cause I think the 10 is that cap of healthy, like ex extreme, right? Mm -hmm. I think at 20 ops and it's a central hub, it's a totally different beast. It's got all the specialists, all that. It's a different model, right? But I've had to throttle myself back. Even in this office, I keep telling myself it's too small, but like, it's it's what it takes to realize hey this is what i'd like to continue to scale and once we're done here we're done here there's only so much capacity that can be managed here that means create another location right so um after a while you do get to know your model enough to be able to say all right this is what works but i i every time i've ever built it was always too small and never right. fast enough. we're so embarking on a dangerous <clears throat> conversation though all right, so Trey, apply Trey, this go to ahead. General, go general go ahead. If you, you need to, go you need ahead. to look at it because applying it to a 22 mop op, op, op model of Dwight's that then scales back to a 10 op model, I would say when you're talking about the the 80 percent of dentists out there that are are solo practitioners, they build one office and they build one office throughout their entire career. The vast majority of people are going to say, "I wish I had built bigger." They're okay. going to get the capacity and the Great. analogy that you use whenever <clears> you're talking to someone is you're gonna you get new patients indefinitely every month you're pouring coffee in a coffee cup the coffee cup never gets bigger and all you do is spill the coffee everywhere so it's rare although there are the you know in this in this circle and the people that that we're talking about that tend to have have higher visionary uh or bigger visions whatever you want to call it higher autonomy and those Drive. those are the people that might you know, overbuild and do things like that. They're also the people that may, you know, it's a Dwight going, man, I should have built bigger. 22 wasn't enough. But I think the the general consensus for the average dentist out there is yes, bigger is a better proposition because we're not talking 10,000 square feet to the, to the, the solo practitioner typically. One more op makes a huge difference when you're talking about four to five, Agreed. five to six. Okay. And Craig, I, I hear you. You're yeah, going down a dangerous road. If this isn't advice. This is just, this is right, just poor guys let's, shooting let's, the shit. I know it is, but, but there's some people that want to be like, yeah, and, and this is what Dwight said and Trey said, and this is great. And, and, and I just think that when we look at the statistics of like 80% of dentists or 90% of dentists saying that they're at emotional and physical burnout, suicide, drug abuse, all that shit that we always talk about, I, this model that I built almost fucking killed me guys. It almost drove me to the breaking point. Fair. And yes, as I sit on the other side of this adversity, I became stronger. I became bulletproof for lack of a better word. Now in the hindsight that I have, I would say, yeah, fuck yeah. I, I would have done it bigger. Uh, I see. But that's I see disingenuous to this, what it had, what it was. Yeah. Had I, I asked know you know all of us, right? All of us, when we look back, that's fair. yes. I'll do, I'll do it bigger. But for each one of us and all your personal stories, it almost wrecked each one of us, Pete. That's it true. almost wrecked you. It almost wrecked me. All right. Let's sure you, yeah, Craig, so that's actually important. very, uh, I stand kind of like corrected in that. And, and I totally agree with you. It just depends on the timeline and, and we're all privileged to be seeing, sitting here saying like, Oh yeah, build bigger. And you know, that's all we ever hear, but you're right. You're right. It is a dangerous conversation. It's dangerous advice. And, and those that fail, by the way, retreat into the silence of their own misery. They don't reach yeah. out to us. They don't awesome. say, hey, by the way, I'm ready to blow. You know, we get some of that. But like, so it's it's biased, not in our own bias. But it's like, why? when you're in the hospital, all you see is sick people. You think the whole world is sick. And then you get out of the hospital and everybody's healthy. So the people that fail move out of our lives. They withdraw and they don't they don't reach out the successful people <laughs> like talk the it's funny craig i've been kind of listening to a bunch of ryan holiday stuff right now just like stoicism stuff just because yeah. i don't know kind of felt like i needed it right now and yeah. what you're talking about like people not asking for help because they look at it as as a failure i need help from someone and and the stoic view is asking for help is actually is actually refusing to give up right yeah. Which yeah. I was like, man, that's such a cool, that's such a cool shift. 
of, of mentality. Like asking someone for help is just, I refuse to stop this process. I want, I want to help. Not right, I but, failed but, and I need your help. But the, but the act of like looking back and again, I'm not, I'm not like this positive psychology th guy that's like never look back, but like, it's just unfair to look back at anything with the optics you have now and ha live with regret. Okay. Because isn't, we, isn't that the it, whole, isn't that what wisdom is though, bud? That is it wisdom. is. But like, would I have built this bigger? Yeah. But when I did it, I was like, what the hell am I doing? Right. And when you were in years, the throes was, of the battle, of course you wouldn't. But yeah, like now no. that you're over the, over the hump, we can skip off of it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, okay. Okay. As long as we, as long as I just wanted to amend what we said. It That's fits all. who you are. And if you took all of us away, I'm, I'm going to double down on this. If you took all of us away and you asked, the builders that I just walked my building with this morning, they're going to tell you every time we build a dental office, they said it was too small because it is because people want to go to nice new spaces and that the general market requires nice new dental offices and people who double down and invest in their business right. end up growing their practice. Okay. Right. So but whether Dwight, you're building Dwight, a Dwight, you're, you're, there's anything. another layer of bias. You're of course, asking because, builders, Builders don't meet average dentists. They meet dentists who are entrepreneurial. So I'm amongst saying, entrepreneurial dentists, yes, they wish they went well, bigger. Yes, 100%. Yes, but we should encourage But we people. don't have just an entrepreneurial listener. We have other listeners that are striving for survival. The vast and majority now of the people listening to this pod are strivers. They're wanting to do something more than just- Well, then let's, get, let's take a pulse. Comment below if you're listening to this on YouTube, if you're feeling like you should be going bigger or you're worried that you went too big or how do you feel let's get a measurement of how because there's other people like i shouldn't have done this right and that was me for a long time did All you right. do any any of you for any of you three at a certain point in your career not just for a day but for months or maybe even a year say what the fuck did i do holy shit i'm over my skis <laughs> yes or no yes okay no Peter? No. no never no never never okay okay so Trey, you and me. Can we slip the grid? So it's Trey yeah. You know? yeah, let me let me move. Let me let me get yeah. Trey and put you over so here. Trey and I are the yeah, only ones yeah. that like yeah, I got yeah. on my skis. Losers on the right, winners on the left. <laughs> oh, and yeah. awareness is what's going to evolve. Oh, I'm calling evolved. bullshit on Peter, by the way, because Peter, you were in a bad state. Why was that bad state? What was that period? Peter's blue period. Well, that was embezzlement, partnership breakup, premature son. I was always in the hospital for and. I was the main okay. provider in all okay, those so at that all point, three offices that I had. Okay. It so at that point, if I was said, Peter, should you have gone bigger? It would have been a fuck yeah, I should have gone bigger during that time. Well, that's a very, that's a very, you can't look at it in the micro and they've asked that's me that. That's what I'm day. asking. No, I'm no, asking, no. was there any point in your career where you're like, I should not have gone bigger? What but it wasn't an infrastructure do? thing. I wasn't no. like, oh shit. It was no, more it was of a life thing. It was a life thing. Life gets no, complicated. You, 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 look. Yes, You're but I can't you. shorten life. I can't make it bigger or smaller. We're talking about business. And the truth is, is that is not who we naturally are. And I get it. We might be talking to craftsmen out there or people who are not going to be striving, but that is, that's a totally different dynamic. You can't interflux the two. Well, listen, Trey. I said my piece. I feel good about our message. Good. Here, let's move on. Last thing, Trey, what are you most excited about right now in dentistry or, or your own thing? What's going on? What are you most excited about? What are you hitting the ground? Just thrilled that you get to do today. Uh, great question. All right. So in dentistry, I am most excited about AI. We just put Pearl in across all the offices. And that's, uh, I'm excited to see how. Is it AI Kyle is Stanley coming to the summit, Craig? Yeah. Kyle Stanley, uh, founder yeah. of Pearl, is speaking at the Bulletproof Summit. So we just had him train <clears> the <throat> docs. He got on and did a Zoom with all the docs and went through the Kyle did? program. Yeah. No yeah, way. So everyone was super, super excited about that. And uh, for my own program, you know, we, we just added two more offices, one startup, one, one purchase, and I'm, I love growth. So this is, I'm, I'm back Every in my time. You're thriving good. right now, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's for you, brother. Good for you. I Dwight, I, you're, I think this, it's the, kind of the same answer, right? What, what's most exciting for you right now? What are you, what are you getting just hitting the ground? Yeah. First right? off, I, I love the fact that you started with the AI talk because we put in like Overjet about a year ago and it's transformed the consistency of patient care across all offices it's just beautiful the doctors love it so anything ai i'm spending a lot of time i know pete and i are in the same we're diving down into some of this tech because i think it's going to drastically change the way we do it so that's an exciting moment for me right now because anytime there's a giant 
change in the way the world's going to work. I feel like I want to be slightly on the edge of it and kind of enjoy it. At the same time, to me, it's build time. It's, it is double down and grow um, and invest in kind of what we're doing. I'm expanding, you know, my management company and I'm investing in other uh, avenues outside of just dentistry, which is kind of fun and what management company can do. And so that to me is, is the gameplay right now. And it's, I'm excited. Wait, about it. You can, you can, you can answer this or not is every a hundred percent of your discretionary income going towards things, your things in your uh, business right now. Yeah. I'm doubling down on everything. 100% of your, of your things other than your mortgage and your car or whatever, your groceries, 100% of your discretionary income is going towards your own business. Yeah. I'm yeah, absolutely. It's that Just, time. Craig, can you tell, can you tell from afar? <laughs> I can No, you guys are, you got, I can tell you there's a definitely a different swagger going on right now. And I think you both live in flow when you are creating and, um, and and that is that is cool, Craig. Yeah. What are you most excited about right now, bud? Uh, right at the moment, and maybe this is just a couple week thing, but it's uh, BP right now. I'm most excited about Bulletproof. Um, I uh, I feel like there's this like we spoke about. There's a challenge, and uh, I'm not giving up on how to arm the profession with the tools. Um, I feel like the profession's under attack, and I um, I I'm, I'm feeling very called to help dentistry mm -hmm. in, in, in whatever way I can. So Bulletproof is exciting me a lot. Um, but I mean, that doesn't mean I'm not less excited about other things. But like you asked me, that's what that's what what's on my plate right now. I'm working on trying to um, help um, like kind of like the BP Alliance thing. I'm working with a with a buddy with someone and I'm, I'm, I'm just working in with Peter and on other things. And I'm kind of working in my own silo right now and trying to see if things work and then to bring it over to the mat to, to you and everybody. Else. Yeah, your mission's just evolved. And I think there's yeah. some, some 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 divine intervention that has pushed you into like, this is a good calling for you for sure. Right yeah, now. I like it. That, right. I like it. But I also um, like dentistry too. What are you excited about, Peter? So we're doing, we're, we're building a, a, a commercial lab right now, um, which I'm really excited about. And, um, you know, Dr. Gandhi, who's one of my partners is really kind of taking that and he's a highly technological dentist and building out like a really cool lab that I think you guys, even you guys would be impressed with from a tech standpoint. Um, just like soup to nuts, full digital, full 3D printing, like the 3D printers that we're buying you guys are the size of refrigerators. Yeah, Which man. ones are they? I can't Carbon disclose. Carbon 3D? I can't disclose that yet. Hmm. You know what the problem with the lab business is? Tell me, buddy. <laughs> tell them, tell them, Dwight. They're not profitable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one of the problems. Hey, guess, that's guess what? That's a little bit of an issue. Uh, well, that's fine. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, the, 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 they make the organization. It's a good, theory, it's a good vertical. All right, let me, let me say this. I'm opening up a lab business that is private. It is only for my own ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah. I don't care. The profit is irrelevant to me. Correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I should, yeah, yeah. I should have made that disclaimer. It is yeah, not yeah. open to the yeah. public and I'm not I'm trying good. to like, yeah. Yeah. It is mainly for speed to delivery, Greg. Yeah. No, I get an operational cost go down. Yeah. I, I, right? No, I would, I love my lab for those reasons. I don't love my lab as a standalone business. But my lab yeah, but, our practice. Yeah, yeah and for the record, all four of us have a lab. Yeah. No, there's I don't. A there's a I reason. Or now you do. Well, you not yet. But it was. I didn't feel like there was ever a time. I'll maybe go into it later. But there's some. There's some been some technological advances. I was like, okay, now's the time. And that was the consensus among my guys and me. It was like now at the time the tech has evolved enough. Uh, the Millers, the the 3D printing. The, the AI tech design is freaking mind blowing, you guys. The, the the CAD CAM AI design from ExoCAD is. Oh yeah. What the like? I know. What's well, going on right now? I would have. Have you identified have, the techs already for yourself? Like the techs in, that are going to run the software and stuff. Interviewing. I would, Pete, I would have to have two, maybe three times the number of techs. I have right now, if it wasn't for ExoCAD and the methodology of just kind of open source, just throwing it all around into all this AI add-ons that are kicking in. I mean, they're, they're amazing. They can scale so fast. When I used to watch somebody change the margin and the distal, you know, forget it. It's just, it's amazing. So much faster. It's so neat. It's just, it's, it, you know, Trey, to your comment, like 
uh, you'd asked me 10 years ago, I would have said the window's 10 years. Like I've always been on record saying like, I think it's the most exciting time in dentistry. This is like the golden years. But I think AI, Dwight, like you're saying, plus advancements in some of this like printing technology. Oh yeah. Is, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I know you're going to say Targus Vectris. I understand. No, no, no. I'm going to say that too. But also I think Peter, had you had a lab or started a lab 10 years ago, it would have been good for you as well. No, 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 because I would have never been able the, the, the quality that I would have wanted on an output perspective from a cosmetics, but really I don't think it would be brought in house. And I did have experience, Craig, from the, the in 2002 when I actually left a practice and opened my own. I had experience with the, with the in house lab, and it was a complete shit show. So that's maybe was my own bias of not wanting to do that because I just had it was like, ooh, I don't want anything to do with that. I want to send my shit out and pay for it in a transaction and it come back. Perfect. Yeah, that but was there's it. opportunities beyond cosmetics. Someone breaks the back of course. tooth. And but but I didn't have that at the time. So now you're right. It, it, the business has evolved. I think the tech is there. I think it's an exciting time to be oh, I agree. doing cool shit like that. And, and Dwight, you know, like he's like AI there, but also AI. I mean, look, we had a conversation. Craig asked a great question about a mall. Like, are you going to complete the loop and have you know, AI start talking to X, Y, and Z? And it was, it was like, it's coming, right? So the advancements, like Craig, you and I spoke in... Um, an AACD and, and I was like, this isn't the next 10 years. This isn't the next five years. This is, things are going to look different in the next 12 months I agree. in our business world. Right. And it's not going to be to our detriment. It's going to be for our advantage. Well, can I make a comment on that? Please. If, if you are not, I mean, you know, I'll sit here and say really basic examples that I have had in my practice for over a year. Right. Patient prism, listening to using AI to listen to our phone calls, where if a patient said they were missing a tooth and my person who answered the phone call did not discuss with them tooth replacement options like implants or bridges and things like that, it would automatically grab that, recognize the, the, the person on my team's phone who answered the phone, send it to their email box with the recording and say, you should call this patient back and remind them that we have these options. I've been doing that for over a year for sure. And then items like digital labs or um, overjet where AI is reading your x-rays at 40 times deeper variations in gray than the human eye can see. Stop trying to act like this is our gameplay. It's not. Radiology is not going to be the human eye game anymore. These are the things I've been dealing with. We've been implementing for over a year. If you're not already doing those things, you're going to get really behind because the pace at which things are kicking in, like those are simple, easy examples. And in my opinion, how did you, how did you find out about uh, patient prism? We've used them. In fact, you know who you um, probably turned me on to it originally was Jenny Bowman from no way. doing marketing. She, she, because for her, it's a standard of figuring out, you can bring in as much marketing as you want. Yeah. And the, you get blamed you when the fact, track yeah. and understand how that was kind of our whole conversation with yeah, them yeah, all. Really basically not, like, Jenny gets blamed when, phones ring uh and they don't book as new patients even though she's driving leads so yeah we i've did been working with jenny for years and that was, was one of awesome. the first things she implemented right so, so one of the things that i just want to let you know that uh peter negotiated with patient prism we just signed up we're both paying customers but he negotiated a three month um trial so you can nice. sign up at bp you know, and prism. Kind of wave, wave setup wave fees it. for uh bp customers so you right. can try it out for three months, 90 days, fire them and say, yeah, that was cool. Or like, yeah. I guess he's that confident. He's like, you're not going to fire us. So. And I guess my point is not necessarily like specific add-ons. Like that's amazing and perfect for everybody. I'm just saying get off zero because this is going to hit us hard. It's like the com it's like the practices that had no computers and were fighting having computers and writing down and having colored pencils and doing that and did that for years and years and years. They missed out on so much growth. well and to, and to come full circle and then we'll wrap right is that like remember we were we were talking about like leveling the playing field and right and so yeah. like you're saying get off zero start investigating things yeah allow you to bring a gun to a gunfight yeah you know I agree. that's it so so yeah. how is the pearl yeah. ai going for you uh trey are you deep into it enough that you can actually speak about it uh you know what there's so we're, we're still trying to decide how what the best use of it right now is whether it be patient education or standardization of diagnosis or you know that type of thing and i've seen a little bit of all of it i've docs that have have really gotten into it and i have docs that are completely against it 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Of yep. course. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're still in that initial. All right. Let's yeah, let's we'll field there. out what the what the majority is going to feel like, and this will kind of declare itself on on what what its use is going to be for us. But but I'm excited about it because it's it's exactly what Dwight said. This is coming. Yeah. So jump so, on and, board. And when we made it part of our morning huddle, we went into the discussion about same day dentistry, and then it populate the report. This many patients are coming in to the office with undiagnosed decay from previous x-rays we've already taken and previous periodontal conditions that were undiagnosed. Here's your same day list. Those lists got to the point where people weren't, you know, they weren't on it. They weren't logging it. We would print those off, put them in the doctor's lounge on people's desks. These are your patients that are coming in. By the way, double check those when they take new sets of x-rays or go through it. And it changed the way, I mean, all my doctors will sit here and say, we fought it at the beginning. Oh, it was a developmental groove. It wasn't decay. Yeah, bull. Just wait. You'll see. Yes, there are some areas. If the cones, you know what really did a great job? It also got my, our assistants to make sure that they were getting the x ray perfect, you know, and then it fixed insurance issues. So it's all about training and developing, getting the whole team. It does a whole lot more for us than you think it would. That's awesome. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's let's, get, it uh, let's get Kyle on the podcast. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. <clears throat> I think that's a good idea. Um, so his is what? What is his called? Pearl, Pearl AI. David okay. Sachs from the Allend is an investor in it too, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, I did hear that. Yeah, he is. Let's so get David Sachs one, there's, done. There's yeah, right. There's we'll do few. we'll do Brady, Frank, and uh, David Sachs at the same time. <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow! Yeah, Trick. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, I got a little sweaty back right about publishing this pod. I know we're still recording, but I'm it's thinking. Not published yet. I know. But like just we're leaving probably. it in about I feel like we were a little rough on poor Brady. And <laughs> and the whole Delta thing, I feel like it was it was super tangential and not relevant. And so I want to apologize to the audience. Uh listen, that's uh, no apology necessary. If you find you're gonna it retract valuable, and apologize. Tune in. Well, hey, hey, Trey, it's the power of editing. It could have it could never no, have I know, totally understand. Totally yeah. understand. That Delta that's part is not gonna make it. Delta no, what? Will. You know what? Like, look, <laughs> what I'm gonna live part? in all my wars. What are we talking about? See, see, by me calling out Peter and saying it's not going to make it, he's for sure like, no, I'm what, double what down. What Delta part, guys? What did we, what did we talk about that I'm um, not remembering? <laughs> I fell asleep. I what fell asleep, this? guys. What Girl, happened? What? <laughs> what Delta part? Seriously, what are you talking about? Delta Airlines, brother. Oh, Delta, Delta Airlines. I'm thinking Delta. Oh, I thought you were yeah. kidding. No, you, you leave were... Delta in, bro. You look like a freaking, <laughs> uh, please. That was great. Follow right. your sword. I'll leave it in. I'll follow my sword. Yeah, I just who cares? Kept, well, I was just trying to save people time. It's not time not to listen to my, you know. But it's hard. It's hard being the moderator, the and coming up with great ideas not. for you guys to to talk to about talk and make about. you guys feel good. It's hard to spend the time, and so sometimes I run out of topics. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, one moderate. last topic. Lonely endeavor. The lonely endeavor at the top. Before we run, guys, one last topic. Summit. Get. I thought he was going to go ERC up here again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what's crazy? No, but you should do still, that, actually. Wait, I got to tell you, ERC. I'm funding this new lab and a whole office based on ERC checks I got. Trey does what I'm saying. All right. Well, inside jokes are super cool. I'm just saying that. <laughs> it's not inside, bro. It's a real thing. That, that yeah. The benefit is real, and I got it, and I can say that if you haven't, it's you're ridiculous to not. I'm literally, I like know. I said, a whole office and a lab. I agree. So. Well, yeah, but. Yeah, no, it's and all right. It's all right. They're no, not going to do it by now. They're awesome. That's what I tell my kids. What do you mean? No, they're still they're not, not doing do it, it by People now. Still... My God, it's been we've been doing it for two years now. Well, not not Peter and I. We only did it five six months ago and just got our check. So there's a lot of people that haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah. Dwight. No, I hear you. I hear you. I don't know. Y'all have y'all have like a. 30 I want to hear you and Trey's secret now. Pissing y'all, me off. Y'all have, a, y'all have like a thirty minute promotional that will be in the middle of this pod anyway. That specifically discusses it, so we'll be fine. <laughs> I no, think he's, a point, he's pointing to being he, he he's accusing of being a grifter. I think the real grifter is you, Dwight. We're giving you all this publicity. <laughs> You're not that entertaining, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's for, Dwight. Good, Dwight, yeah, you gonna pull, good. <laughs> Dwight the grift. <laughs> the grift is real. Well, oh, listen, we pay we pay these companies to do work for us. Oh, and we shit. believe in them. We're not doing the uh, old uh, Trey, the old switch. I agree. Well, 
I love you guys. The two guys, guys on the bottom. Like, oh. I don't know. I don't know hey, about these guys. on the bottom with these guys. Anyway, get your summit tickets. That's gonna be Is there a joke well. there too, guys, on the summit or no? No, we're excited about the summit, man. No, you're not, <laughs> just, you're not, you're not, not excited about getting Dennis hundreds of thousands of dollars in the ERC. We're That's going boring. to at yeah. the summit, we're gonna give you hundreds of billions of dollars of worth. We're gonna quadruple billion X you. But act now. Act now. Well, Never act now. So it's ten years left. All right. Well, audience, I hope you've enjoyed having Dwight and Trey on the podcast. Because well, this, this is the last, is the last we're, we're going to fucking motherfuckers. see them. <laughs> I knew something. Anyway, I got to go, guys. Love y'all. See you soon. See y'all.